What's up, everybody? I'm back from an incredibly long and productive hiatus to bring you some new Dice Masters videos centered around this team. This is a team centered around Black Adam, the rare Black Adam from the newest um, Dice Masters set. Um, he's a really interesting card that says while he is active, when his uh, when a character die is KO'd, if it's not a sidekick die, um, it goes back to its card unless its owner pays uh, one damage or one life, pays one life to keep it KO'd instead of it um, going back to the card. Really kind of a funky, cool ability. It can uh, hit both players and the obvious. My, my first um, inclination was to pair it up with Talisman of Ultimate Evil. So that's really cool. Threw on Rip, Rip Hunter's Chalkboard onto this team as well just because I wanted to play around with its interaction of paying a shield and moving things um, to your prep. Obviously, Red Dragon is there for the buying of Talisman. The other cards I just kind of threw on just to see what would happen. Um, the Mindless Ones from and, and Wong, both from the team pack. And uh, Professor X and Gorilla Grodd there for Ramp and a Finisher. The two basic actions that I chose to pair with this team were Blessing, um, give everything plus one plus one, and Anger Issues for the global and just for the overcrush, I guess, is nice. Um, it's four cost, so it dissuades people buying it. Um, jumping into the first game that I played, I played these games a while back um, in the hiatus that I've been gone, I guess. Uh, I played this a while ago. Got two sidekicks and um, a shield and a fist. So I'm going to reroll the sidekick so that I can do something. Because I can't do much with a shield and a fist. I could buy a Wong, and that is it. I'm going to reroll those sidekicks. Now the question is, do I want to reroll one or both? Choosing to reroll both, end up with another fist and a mask. My opponent over there is running a um, lantern team, if you haven't taken a look already. Let's jump over to that at the end of this turn. Uh, question, though, at the beginning of this game... What do I want to buy with four energy? And I think I want to start by paying one for Rip Hunter Chalkboard Global and picking up one of the Mindless Ones. I went with that over a Wong, um, but I probably should have gone Wong and then um, used the Mask for PXG. Here's my opponent's turn, uh, not turn, his team. It is his turn, though. Um, he's running a pretty standard um, Lantern team. He's got the White Lantern Dead Man on it, though, which is really interesting. Um, so he's going to be able to use that if he wants to. It's really tough to buy, though. It's a really challenging buy to be able to come up with all of those energy uh, types at the same time. Other than that, you can see some of the interactions that he's playing around with. He also put the uh, Green Lantern, um, that is the crossover character, on his team. Uh, that's not as hard to buy. You can definitely buy that more easily, and it's got some great stats if you can field it. Uh, but for a two cost, it's a great purchase. He chose to run Big Entrance and Teamwork, Teamwork being a great card to go with all of those lanterns. Um, so it will share, they will share team affiliations, some of them. Some of them won't, obviously a red lantern and a green lantern won't share team affiliations. So my opponent's turn begins, he's got four energy, he rolls four energy, uh, two shields, a question mark, and a fist. He is also going to use Rip Hunter Chalkboard Global, pick up a big entrance, um, and he's going to... Looks like he's going to put that in the bag. I can't tell if he's going to or not. No, he, he uh, prepped it over, of course, because Rip Hunter's Chalkboard. So um, I roll five dice, one of those being the die that I prepped last turn. It came up one fist, then it comes up two fists. Not so good. Uh, let's see. So I got five energy, and I could conceivably do it again. Um the Rip Hunter Chalkboard Global. The RHC Global. That's kind of a mouthful too. Not much better. Only kept one mask. Um, this is when I remembered, oh yeah, I'm playing Constructed. I have the ability to use Professor X Global. I put him on my team. I might as well. I had forgotten that first turn. It had been so long, and it's still really long since I've played a full-on Constructed matchup. No um, limitations or stipulations or anything like that. Just bring a team and play. So I've kind of, I, I, I definitely got out of the swing of things with uh, ramping and that sort of thing. Bought a Wong there and um, prepped over uh, the purchase that I had made. I actually bought two Wongs. One went to the spent pile and one, or the used pile, and one went to prep area. So he's going to add his um, big entrance, I think. There he goes. 
and ends up with five six energy oh, five energy and a uh, sidekick. Let's see if he rerolls a sidekick. He does. It comes back as a sidekick, but he does land big entrance. And this is one of the reasons why I moved away from big entrance because I was a big proponent of big entrance for a while. But um, these types of turns happen too often with early buys on big entrance where you pay or you, or not pay, you, you field some sidekick or whatever and you have four energy or three energy and you can buy one thing with big entrance. It's great for uh, prepping into the bag, but I think the chalkboard global kind of renders big entrance moot at this point. So he's got three energy. He's going to pay two for a Kyle Rayner. Looks like he's going to pay those two. And one for um, the Saint Walker. And he's not putting those in his bag. I think that's a misplay. Might have been a while since he's done that too. Oh, there he goes. Now he puts them in the bag. Been a while for both of us. We have neither of us have played um, Unlimited in a while. Our scene has been really big into uh, Rainbow Drafts lately. All right, so I got four out of the bag, plus two, or three, I guess it is. And I roll a lot of stuff, one of those being a Wong, a 2-2 two -two side Wong, and a one-fist side. I also have a sidekick and four energy. So the question being, I am going to reroll um, the one-fist Wong. There's, it can only improve from there. Do I also take the sidekick, or do I keep the sidekick? And then I don't need those bolts, so I'm going to reroll those as well. See what comes up. Get another Wong, get a um, sidekick, and so those energy come back as one of them comes back as a question mark, which is exactly what I wanted. I can purchase something for two. Um, fist and a uh, bolt for another Wong, and I can uh, use PXG on my opponent's turn to move those dice I just used to purchase that. Um, over to my prep area. I attack with a sidekick. He attacks with a sidekick, or he blocks with a sidekick. He gets to roll a sidekick next turn. Yippee for him. And he pulls out uh, his two characters that he prepped last turn. Going into his turn three, that was a certainty because he prepped them into that bag turn two, meaning his, his bag was empty. So rolling five dice. It looks like he's got some energy. It's hard to tell... Um, Saint Walker's side because of the way that that die is made it being a slightly translucent it's a very cool looking die but hard to tell on camera what he rolled comes up with two energy there he's got, looks like he's got a lot of energy I guess that must be on its uh, must be on its second side or something that costs two to field it's also got some energy here that's sitting in reserve, or maybe that is all energy. That'd be that'd be a huge energy buy for him, a huge energy turn. So he's got a mask. He's got two fists, two bolts. Um, he can conceivably buy anything he wants on this turn. It looks like he's going to. Uh, well, let's see. It looks like he's going to buy a Hal Jordan. So he spun down one of his uh, double um, mask, or it was a double whatever it was. Spun down one of his double bolts and paid a mask to pay for the crossover cost. Then he's paying that um, second bolt that's on that die along with the rest of that energy to pick up a jade, it looks like. So a huge buying turn. He's definitely got the um, character advantage, even though they will be going into the bag. Um, he's got the advantage on characters, meaning that I, I either have to play this one way or the other I have to be extremely aggressive and try to whittle his, his health down or I need to um, make some serious purchases of my own so I PXG'd there pulled the mindless one and I actually end up rolling the mindless one I also have a sidekick his board is open so I can deal him damage directly as much as I want which is nice obviously Gonna have to pay to field the 4 3 side or the 4 2 side. Reroll one of those sidekicks, come up with another mask, field, and then pay to field that. So I've got four characters on board to his 1, 2, 3, 4, and I think he has something else. Maybe he only has four. So maybe I have, uh, we are balanced in characters. Um, I pay to pick up another mindless one. I have extremely low drop. 
uh, characters. So I've uh, purchased and tried to field those as often as possible. It's still early in the game as well. Question then becomes, do I attack with anything that I have here? Not much will be coming out of his bag, so I don't. Nothing um, scary here. I could have attacked and hoped that I could cycle faster than him because I am using Professor X Global. My opponent seems to not be. So there was a possibility that I would be able to still cycle through my bag uh, with the speed in which I'm moving because of Professor X Global. He feels a sidekick is left with uh, two energy and um, used the big entrance. So he's going to pick up a teamwork and again, he rolls the big entrance with no energy, and so that you really have to kind of pair big entrance with Professor X Global to, for it to be um, fully successful, for you to have a full range of purchase options open to you, because you don't have enough energy when you only draw four, or you only roll four. So I pull four from my bag. I pull the third of the four Wongs that um, I brought to the game. I purchased three so far. that You can see the other one sitting there on the card. I roll that one, so I've got three two twos and one uh, four two and one uh, one one. I've got a lot of energy here as well. I've got seven, so I could straight just purchase a um, a gorilla grod, which actually would be a great play because of the amount of characters that I have on board. Sadly, I can't uh, purchase and then prep it, so I have to put that out there. Or I don't have to pay to put that out there. I am. Um, I did, in fact, though, pay um, a shield to prep over my Black Adam. You can tell I'm clearly just trying to put together the, um, I guess that you could say the strategy or the the engine for this team, which is that Black Adam. I want to see its interactions work. This was one of my favorite cards coming out of this new set. Um, it had such an interesting ability that I wanted to try and toy around with it and see what happened. I attack with a 2-2. Two, two. He blocks with his 1-1, one, one, takes no damage, adds that to his roll. I'm okay with doing that because it whittles his board down. He can't build up a sidekick um, wall. Uh, and I know he's not rolling, or well, he's statistically unlikely to roll a big entrance next turn. It was a fairly, fairly low chance. So no point in, in uh, worrying about him having a another big buy turn. Plus he needs characters, so he really can't uh, focus on big entrance anyway he has one he's gonna have to pay to field it i believe it's a good one for him it's jade so it's going to act as a little bit of ramp pays three for a kyle rayner and he paid a um, shield there to prep it over so he didn't have to pay to put out uh jade and jade is a while blocking uh when she gets ko'd or something like that uh, i guess it's anytime she gets ko'd anytime she gets ko'd uh, she preps a die which is nice I pay XG twice, move over four dice, and uh, empty my bag, rolling everything. Don't end up landing Black Adam, but I've got so much damage on board that I'm to the point where I can start actually looking for lethal. Especially if I reroll Black Adam and he comes up as a Black Adam. See, I've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's not counting what's in my reserve pool. So he does not show up, though. I reroll Black Adam, see if I could get him. So I've got 12, and then whatever that side's on, another 4-2, I guess. 12 plus 4 is 16. Now I just got to get a, get rid of that Jade, and then keep, uh, keep my options open, and I could have a one-turn lethal here in the coming turns. So I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 energy pay a shield and then pay the seven to bring over a gorilla grod as a great turn because i know i'm guaranteed to roll it it doesn't have to work through the bag even though i killed my ramp by purchasing it end my turn don't attack and he's going to roll five dice one of those being a kyle kyle rayner it looks like two of those being a kyle rayner and so he lands one of them He's going to re-roll his characters, and he's going to re-roll that big entrance as well. Big entrance comes up the two generic, which is what he needed. And I think he came up with a Saint Walker as well. So he's going to field both of those, paying the energy to do so. He's got three left over. 
So conceivably here he could buy another teamwork, could buy another big entrance, buy a Carol Ferris. Um, he's got a couple of options. I wonder what he's going to do. Looks like he's going to pick up Hal Jordan. Paying the two for that. Maybe he only had two. If I said uh, if I said some three cost, I apologize. He might have only had two there. Sometimes when the hand gets in the way, it's hard to tell. So I draw four from the bag. Four sidekicks. And roll up Gorilla Grodd. And that actually right there is pretty much game. Uh, Gorilla Grodd adds plus one attack to all of my attackers and gives everybody else overcrush. Or I guess it gives him over crush as well and plus one to everyone else something like that it's some ridiculous ability and it's pretty amazing so i uh pay to field him put out my sidekick um he does have enough blockers to block some stuff but uh i mean i cycle he cycles i, I kind of have a, a huge advantage here choosing what to attack with though is the question because i know he i don't have lethal at this point so do, the question is, do I attack with sidekicks? Do I attack with um, more than that? But it looks like I only choose two sidekicks, which are two ones, and both have overcrush. So if he takes four, then that's good for me. Just means more sidekicks go into my bag, and I still have a huge board. If he doesn't take four, that's fine. Most likely uh, KOs something. So he blocks one. And that KO is the one. And then he takes uh, one. So then he's going to block the other one. He's going to take one overcrush damage um, from the uh, lack of defense on the Jade. And he'll KO and block, or he'll block and KO my other sidekick. So that actually works out pretty well for me. He preps a die from that, uh, from that encounter because of Jade. Draws four more, adds those two, and rolls six. Comes up with a couple of characters. Also lands a big entrance, which serves him, again, serves him not much purpose. Probably best to re-roll that. I'm also curious as to why he's choosing not to uh, Professor X Global wonder if he's valuing something more than than uh, lowering his bag count. He's obviously stayed alive, though, and that's partly because of the lack of, of pressure on my end. I'm not pressuring him. He tried to field a single bolt. It did not work. Um, so he pays a question or a, a mask there to field his, uh, his Hal Jordan. Pays two to pick up another Hal Jordan. Let's see what happens. He's clearly not, not going to attack. Had to pay the mask that he used there um, because of the Hal Jordan crossover. And then um, there are some interactions between those that are buffing some of those dice. I think um, when... I think it's a Kyle Rayner that has a buff when a Green Lantern character is out on the field. He gets plus one or plus two, something like that. Um, Saint Walker has a buff as well. So those are statted up dice. And let's see if he chooses to attack with them. I've got a clear advantage because I have the blocking numbers. And um, if he attacks into this, I can choose how the interactions are going to work out and then uh, help myself guarantee to uh, get to reroll. I guess I will get to reroll anything that gets KO'd next turn, the beginning of next turn. It's probably not a great idea to attack, but he's going to push in anyway. He's got a fist there that can activate anger issues if he chooses. He's got a anger issues um, global fist if he wants. So gonna block there as well as um, blocking there, and I might end up just taking that middle damage to clear the board, but I don't. Block with a sidekick. It's easy KO fodder. It might have been just better to take that damage. Let whatever KO KO and take that damage. IPXG there at the end. 
and chooses not to uh, use his fist, saving that for uh, my turn, I would assume. But I'm sitting there with 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage on board, not counting Gorilla Grodd himself, which I would assume would get blocked by the one character. Rolled one of the two characters there. Did not roll Black Adam again. So he's uh, stubbornly refusing to show up and uh, use his cool ability. There he finally does. He finally shows up. And But it might actually spell the end of the game. Uh, because of the number of stats I have on the board at this moment. Got more energy than I know what to do with as well. But it helps me push through the bag. So I've got 3, 7, um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, can't tell what Black Adam's on. But then add 1 to all of those. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 definitely. So I've got more than enough to kill him if I just push everything in. He blocks the biggest... Um, I would imagine he would block the biggest. Yep, blocking uh, Gorilla Grodd and the rest goes through. I can also pump Gorilla Grodd because he has Overcrush because he gives himself Overcrush. It's kind of an interesting ability in that they gave that card Overcrush at all times but didn't ha uh, explicitly have to print it on the card. It's pretty cool. But ends up ends up sending him a ton of damage. So at the end of that game, I'm... Uh, Kind of underwhelmed with the fact that I couldn't actually get Black Adam to do his cool thing. So going into game two, my opponent's going to switch up his team, but I know I want to um, try and force this Black Adam ability and just see if I can uh, get, a, get a read on whether or not it's good, whether or not it's bad, um, see what I think of it. And if the team that I've put around it is the team that I want to, uh, or the team that best suits it, I guess you could say. So thanks for watching, and let's jump into game number two.